Hey what's up, my name is Ines Alea and I do VFX. In today's video, I'm going to replace my head with a pumpkin. So for this video, I would need a carved out pumpkin, then find a way how to put that pumpkin into my 3D software, and then I need to track my head and replace it with that pumpkin. Then we need to composite everything together and hopefully get a pretty cool final result. Oh, and by the way, if you are watching this as this video is uploaded in four days, we are going to close the Epic VFX Academy. So as you might already know, we currently have the doors to the Epic VFX Academy open where you can become a student of mine. So if you would like to learn how to create epic visual effects in a structured way from A to Z, having me and my team as mentors to get yourself up to that level that you want to get to, then this is the perfect opportunity. But as said, the doors are closing in four days, and that's because all the students that have already joined or will be joining until the end of this date, they do deserve to have my full attention, and I can only give that to a certain amount of people, so we have put a deadline and also have limited spots available. So if you would like to become one of those people, then definitely check out the link in the description. The Academy comes with a bunch of bonuses, and if you decide to sign up in the next four days, you will all also get a extra module for social media and TikTok visual effects. So that's a really cool topic that we're going to be covering inside as well. So basically, yeah, if you are a beginner, an intermediate or already an advanced user looking to upgrade their work, then the Academy is definitely a place for you. Anyway, if you would like to learn more, definitely check out the link in the description below because we are ending soon and closing our doors. And I don't know when we're opening again. So yeah, all right, so now back to the video. The first thing that I needed was a pumpkin, but a good looking pumpkin. And luckily, our main editor, Enzoe, actually had a pumpkin lying around that he was holding aside for his Halloween party where he wanted to have a carved out pumpkin. Now, I asked him if I could use that pumpkin for our video, so we ended up using it a whole lot sooner than we anticipated. The idea was that I would carve out a pumpkin, then use it for the video, and then he can use it as decoration for his party. Of course, I'm not a carving expert, but actually a friend of ours does it every single year. Her name is Kim, and she will be carving out our pumpkin. So here we go. The first thing that we need to do is take the top part off and then you need to empty the pumpkin completely. So try to clean it completely from the inside using your hands and a spoon and just put it aside in a cup. Maybe you can even make some pumpkin soup. After that, you need to start carving. So obviously you will need to have a design in mind. You can scroll through the internet and yeah, start out cutting out your design. Kim here was experienced enough to do it without drawing, but I would suggest that you draw a face onto the pumpkin and then try to cut it out. Try to make it look interesting. We didn't want to go too crazy with the face for the pumpkin. We kind of wanted a regular Halloween pumpkin, but still to look good. So this is what we ended up with. All right, so our pumpkin looks really cool. It's also an amazing pumpkin to start with. And now we have something to use as a prop in our video. So here is another tip. If you want to keep your pumpkin as long as possible, then you would need to use hairspray as much as possible on the pumpkin just so it doesn't create fungi. Unfortunately for us that didn't end up working and two days or three days after the recording yeah this happened. <laughs> Sorry Enzoe that you couldn't use it in your decoration for your Halloween party. I owe you one. All right, so next I need to record my footage and obviously I want to hold a real pumpkin and then slam it into my face or act like I'm going to do that. And then I have my brother here. This is my brother. He comes to take it out of my hand. So then I just act out a few things and there we go. Then I go a little bit crazy and I cover my hat. This is actually for later in the video. We had a lot of fun though. All right, so now to keep this pumpkin forever and ever, because obviously it's going to die out soon, because as you can see what happened to it, well, because we're making this video later, I can go back in time. And luckily I took 360 photos all around the pumpkin. So the idea here is that you take as many photos as possible and you just walk around your pumpkin, centering your pumpkin and just try to cover every single area of the pumpkin. So start off with a low angle looking up and go 360, then go centered and do 360, then have a top down angle and also do another 360. And I brought all of these in Lightroom. When you are doing this, three things are really important. The first thing is that you put it on a static object that is small, but still can support your object without jiggle. The second part is try to avoid any kind of reflections. So try to do this in the early morning or when it's cloudy, so you have your natural diffusion of the sky or do it indoors with an evenly lit scene. Then the third, 
And most important part is also to have your camera settings in manual. So you can either do this using your phone for free, really simple, just going to the Google Play app and install the Kiri Engine app. Then you just log into your free account and you just take a 70 photos maximum, I think for the free version. And you can just take 70 photos of your pumpkin and that's going to make a scan automatically in the app. I took the more advanced route, but really it's not necessary if you want to create a video like this. I just like to do things in overkill using my S1H as my main camera, having high resolution photos and then uploading these photos in the in-app browser from the Kiri Engine app. This is only available for the pro users, but if you want to use this or try this, you can just use this completely for free and you can get like three exports, fully functional exports uh, a week. So if you have a free version, you can just do as much as I can just with your phone. I let it upload and then it's going to process in the background and end up giving me something like this. This already looks perfect. All I have to do here is download it and open up Cinema 4D. In Cinema 4D, I'm just going to import this 3D scan object and it also comes with its textures. I'm going to just quickly optimize this a little bit more by removing the background and also the stand that my pumpkin was on. I'm also going to recenter my pumpkin and remove everything that is unnecessary and then just recenter all my access points just to optimize the object a little bit more. After that, I'm going to create a redshift material and here I'm going to import that diffuse layer that we have from the Kiri engine. Then I'm going to create a new texture and I'm going to also add in some ramps. I'm going to use this texture in some ramps just so I get a grayscale image of that image. This I can then use for a roughness map or a bump map just to get my materials a little bit more realistic and get a little bit more texture in all these different areas. So playing around a little bit with the material ends up giving me something like this. And by the way, if you would like to know more about this, I also did a live stream on how I actually did the entire 3D scanning process. So not how I replaced my head, but how I 3D scanned it, how I then um, optimized it in Cinema 4D and how I ended up doing a render using Redshift. So if you would like to see the full version of that, just go and check out these live streams. I'll put a link in the description. The only problem here is when you're doing 3D scanning, it's going to recognize the depth of the eyes and the mouth, but it doesn't have a complete hole on the inside. So it's not a hollow object. So what we're going to do is create a new sphere and place that in the pumpkin. Then using the points mode, I'm going to use the magnet tool to kind of put it in place and make it just a little bit smaller than the pumpkin, but big enough to cover up the areas of the eyes and the mouth. Then I'm just going to cut this out using a bool object. And voila, so now we have a hollow object where we can see inside of our pumpkin. So now I'm going to create another material and this is going to be an emission material that is illuminating a red or dark orange color. This I'm going to add it to a new sphere that I'm going to be placing inside of my pumpkin just so we get illumination from inside of the pumpkin casting outwards. The next thing that we need to do is open up Adobe After Effects. I'm going to import my original file and I'm just going to cut it where I actually slam into my face and then I'm going to make sure that my brother takes it away, try to keep in the same position and when I continue the movement, I'm just going to make a simple cut and that's just going to be the transition. After that, I'm going to isolate my head by just masking around it and making sure that I only see my head. Then I'm going to pre-compose this and I'm going to use a 3D camera tracker. The reason why I want just my head to be seen is so we can use the 3D camera tracker as an object tracker instead because all it sees is a moving head and it's going to just track the points on the head. So that's a really cool way on doing object tracking. Unfortunately, because my face and my actual shot was a little bit out of focus, I didn't have a really sharp face. Having a sharp face when doing 3D face tracking is really important. So I ended up having a great representation from the position of my head, but I didn't have the correct rotation values. So then I 3D camera track my head and I'm going to add in a solid on these points. So now I have something like this. I can see that my track didn't fully work. This is because my shot is slightly blurry and it's not completely sharp. Also my face is pretty small in that shot. So it doesn't have a lot of detail to capture my track. So anyway, I already have the position of my head. That's already really important information. So now I'm going to export all this data and I'm going to import this in Cinema 4D. So then in Cinema 4D, I'm going to replace this solid with the actual pumpkin head. Make sure that your scene scale is correct. And I'm also going to add in my dome light that represents the garden. 
Now, to get the facial expressions of a pumpkin that was actually shot or 3D scanned statically, we're going to use a pretty cool technique called Pose Morph. I actually added a few points. Pose Morph allows you to just manipulate the points on your existing object, and wherever you move that to, it's going to make it as a pose. So basically creating new poses and then using the magnet tool to just deform your entire object creates a pose, and now you can animate between the, these poses. So I did different poses for closed eyes, open eyes, open mouth, laughing mouth, and closed mouth, and stuff like that. After that, you can just keyframe the animation of these. Once you're ready, of course, I'm going to render everything out in multi-passes and bring them in Adobe After Effects to do some final comp work. I added in some shadows below it and also some reflections. I added a perfect glow on my emission channel to just make everything stand out a little bit more. Added in a night overlay gray that I always enjoy to do. And then at the end, I also wanted to make the pumpkin fall off my head and you would actually not see a head. And that's exactly why I recorded myself like this at first. Get the texture of what it would look like if I wouldn't be having a head. Obviously now you can still see my hair. I'm just going to freeze this frame. So for this I just removed my head using a clean plate or you can try to do it with the content aware fill. Then I used this part here from the video where I acted like a stupid. But this was just to get the texture of the back part of my hood. So I could actually see how it would look like if I wouldn't have a head. So I'm just using that to track it back in. And of course you can change the hair to like meat. I didn't want to go too crazy so I just kept it black. <laughs> And after that you're playing around a little bit with all these settings, compositing everything together, you will end up with something like this. Alright, so that's pretty cool, I hope you enjoy it as well, and if you did, definitely like this video, and also, maybe subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, so you stay notified when I upload new videos. Apart from that, I'm going to leave you with another upload of mine right here, so you can continue your VFX journey, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos. Happy Halloween!